pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Uh, this evening's agenda, we have uh, Mr. Romerell to discuss the upcoming elections, uh, discussion on the town clerk tax collector update. We have some old and new business to go over, so it'll be a, appears to be a short and brief meeting. Mr. Romerell. So I just want to give you a status update on where we are in preparing for the general election on November 3rd. Uh, the high school use has been approved. Uh, we are still having separate weekly ongoing calls between the supervisors of the checklist, the town clerk, and the moderators with the Secretary of State. Uh, we applied for a federal grant that we discussed when we did the status update in August. And uh, we should have some money coming in from that. So we had uh, 28 absentee voters in 2016. We had 187 ballots returned for 2020. So they're going to pay us for the difference, which is 159. Plus, they'll also give us a small fee because we actually issued 203. So there's a fee for the issuance as well. So uh, Scott's going to keep an eye out for that coming in. And we'll probably have some money coming in from the general election for that as well. No. Um so requests for absentees are closed? No. Okay. I just just curious. We, you know, so we could continue to have requests and more come in? For the general election, yes. We're all closed for the primary. No. Oh, so this is, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> gotcha. Uh, yeah, no, their absentee requests are still coming in. Okay. Uh, there's a stack of them that... Uh, the clerk will process tomorrow. Yep. And you, I believe you can actually request one right up until November 2nd. Is that not the case? That's, That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, up till 5 p.m. on <coughs> Monday, November 2nd, they'll, the request should be here. Yeah. Should be available to be issued. Um, <coughs> the PPE that uh, was issued to the town. Uh, was in excess of what we needed, but uh, we needed some extra sneeze guards or shields in front of the ballot clerks and the supervisors, so we built those ourselves. Uh, we requested more pens uh, because we had more people turn out at the primary than were predicted. And I believe we'll have more people turn out at the general election than we did in 2016 as well. Uh, and then also ballot folders, which were those envelopes that people can stick their ballot in, open it up and put it down on the surface to mark their ballot so that they're not touching surfaces other than the ballot envelope. So it's both a, P a form of PPE as well as a form of uh, personal security for how they're voting until they insert the ballot in the machine. Uh, testing of the ballot machine scheduled to take place on October 27th at 11 a.m., provided we can get the conference room after the uh, supervisors use it. Uh, absentee ballots are still being provided, and registrations are still being received by the town clerk. Uh, and the supervisors <coughs> of the checklist are due to meet on uh, next Tuesday, and they, then again on the following Wednesday to do any uh, last-minute registrations and uh, update the checklist. Uh, and then absentee ballots will be partially processed on October 29th. And then what that means is we open the, what we call the outer envelope to inspect, <coughs> to inspect the inner envelope, see that it's been signed, and to mark the checklist with a highlighter. Uh, because even though you submit an absentee ballot, you can still show up on election day and cast a ballot if your absentee ballot hasn't been processed yet. So we can't mark you off as having voted absentee until election day when we process the absentee ballots fully. So we don't open the inner envelope and we don't know 
There's no pre-counting of ballots like are done apparently in some other parts of the country. Uh, they're feeding them into a machine, but they say they're not looking at the totals, so and yeah. we, don't, we don't have any of that. Yeah, they're reporting them already. <laughs> Bob, that, just so I can understand it in my mind, because that's a, that's a good point that you raised. So if somebody requested an absentee ballot, submitted it, typically on election day, you announce your opening absentee ballots and they get counted. Is it at that point in time then that the ballot clerks would be crossing them off the register? Uh, yeah, we have to go to the checklist and formally mark them as an absentee voter. Okay. All we're doing is highlighting <coughs> them on the 29th so that they're easier to find as you scroll down the alphabet. I understand. Okay. Uh, it, 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 so once you open yeah. them, you actually physically walk to each alphabetical spot or each alphabetical table and you have to announce the ones that are for that table and they mark them off? Yep. So if a voter gets there before we do that, mm -hmm. then they can vote in person that day. Say something dramatic happens and the night before or some sometime intervening when, when they, they cast their absentee ballot <clears throat> in the election day uh, and they want to change their vote. But we do, we will start processing absentee ballots at 9 a.m. on election day. So there's not a big window. 7 to 9, 7 to 9.30. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of time because we have hundreds and hundreds of these to feed into the machine. Mm -hmm. As well as to get marked off while 2,500 or 3,000 voters are coming through. So a very interrupt driven process. Uh, uh, the other thing which uh, people should know is that the post office is not sending our ballots off to be sorted. When we take the ballot up to the post office, they are sorting it locally and delivering it. It doesn't go to Manchester or anywhere else for, for sorting. Don't know what happens on the return trip, but um, that, at least on the outbound trip, um, it should be out a day or so after we take it up to the post office. So support the post office. And um, election, absentee ballots can be received at the polls until 5 p.m. on election day. So if you drive up and want to hand in your absentee ballot, get there by 5 o'clock. After that, we can't accept it. It's the law, and I didn't make the law. And we do not count absentee ballots received <coughs> after 5 p.m. at the town office either. If you know somehow you deliver it to the town office after 5 p.m., it won't get counted. And I know we had a couple ballots that came in after 5 p.m. on the primary day because Jess is here printing out a final list of the absentees at 5 p.m. And some were found here on the floor as having been delivered when we came back at 11 o'clock that night. So, so we, don't, we don't make the rules. Those are the rules we use. And then finally, um, I rented a couple of air purifiers for the primary. I'd like to do that again. At some point, it starts to get personally expensive. So can I put in expense vouchers for things yes. that I didn't predict? Yes, you shouldn't be yeah. paying anything out of pocket. Well, I, I never asked. I, okay. I know Just we don't have a line for it, so. Any Absolutely. of your costs that you've incurred should come in. Scott, yeah. get that taken care of. Definitely. All right, uh, do you have any questions? I do. Uh, when we were at the polls last time, I discussed with you when I was perusing through that manual, it had mentioned about having that, and I don't know the term they use, but the emergency plan in place if we ever had to go somewhere else. Is that something that 
you could develop or should the board develop it? Should we do it together? How should that be done? It sounded like we were supposed to have one in place and then send it to the state for them to check the box that yes, we have done it. Uh, I, I know the state would like to have it. Uh, it's probably something we should work on in coordination with the new emergency management person. Yeah. I think it really comes down yeah, to if, if, if for just... some reason the Messenic wasn't available short notice, where could we go? And our quick discussion was hybrid would meet the same qualifications for ADA. Boynton does not. And it was like, you know, to have well, extra. More challenging. Yes. But the whole thing, they had it <laughs> kind of outlined on yeah. the things that they're looking for. It wouldn't be anything to do with the emergency management director. But it was, you know, having. Enough parking. That, um, those cardboard yeah. devices we have there now for tabletop. Uh, because they say, you know, for example, you know, if a building caught on fire the night before or something, that stuff burned. What's your backup plan? Do you have? So. Well, it, it, uh, so there's one thing, having the plan and then having the resources to deliver on the plan. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a second set of ballot boxes to stick stuff in, if you're saying that stuff that was placed in the gymnasium the night before is no longer available. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be important for the, the school to buy in on this because, hey, if we're not using this facility, we would need to go to this facility just that they know what our plans are and that they would agree with it. So. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, it, it would be a little <coughs> crazy, but I, I think, I mean, if Simple cardboard could be found pretty quick to as substitutions and stuff mm -hmm. instead of being the the white foldaways and save type thing. So I think it's all um, feasible if we put yeah, something. Yeah, certainly down. I don't think we'd have two sets of booths with cloths hanging on them. But no. tables, the volume of tables we might need might be a challenge. I don't know what they they have stocked over there. We know this. Yeah. Hundreds of tables. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Break your back carrying them over. So uh, I'll uh, put that down as uh, something to work on in my spare time. After November 3rd. Well, certainly after October 15th. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to go out in a torrent of rain. So maybe I'll, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Maybe I'll you start can working stay. on that plan. <laughs> 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 you want a hard copy of the update? What's that? update well I wish I had good news there but I don't um, do we have some calls I have a call into into Margie um, and they asked the town clerks association for the list of potential <coughs> candidates that often assist other towns and see if we can reach out to some people and that's Kind of where we're at right now as far as getting a, uh, another resource in here uh, this week we have debbie you know we're pulling her out of the land use office and uh, putting her into the town clerk's office on thursday from 9 to 12 30 and from 1 30 to 4. and last week we did the one to six schedule and she was here till 8 45 because of the <coughs> line because there's a lot of pent-up demand and most of those were vehicle registrations <clears throat> we tried to you know people that were here for uh, like absentee ballots things like that I was 
asking people while they were in the parking lot what they were here for. So if there was something quick that I could run inside and get for them and send them on their way, we did that to try to minimize uh, the length of the line. <clears throat> Not sure what to expect this Thursday, um, but um, uh, those are the, the current hours and uh, we'll see what resources we can identify going into next week. I do have some other folks that are kind of reaching out that uh, might be able to help us uh, either evenings or weekends that work for other towns and are perhaps willing to uh, step in. The challenge that we have, as we've discussed before, is you need to have the credentials. So you, if you don't have the state certifications, they're not gonna let you touch their motor vehicle system. And that's understandable. So mm -hmm. it's not like we can hire somebody and get them up to speed in a matter of days. It's, it's, a, it's a lengthy process. So our challenge is just to find somebody that already has those certifications. Um, <clears throat> with respect to some of the election related uh, activities in the town clerk's office, it has to be a town resident uh, doing that. And uh, uh, so even if I find a resource, if they're not a town resident, they're gonna be able to do certain things with regard to other town clerk duties besides motor vehicle registrations and tax collecting. But there are some things where uh, where Debbie, because she is the town resident, is going to have to to step in, and um, uh, unless we're lucky enough to find somebody in town that has, you know, has all the credentials we need as well, and uh, that's kind of where we where we sit. And and right now, um, the town clerk, you know, I'm anticipating just in the discussions that I've had with her that her availability for for probably the remainder of the calendar year is going to be spotty at best. And um, maybe it'll get better, but we have to plan for the worst case scenario. So uh, you know, my thought is that um, even if we find a temporary solution, I'm not sure how long that temporary resource is going to be available to us either. We probably need to make an effort to actually identify a um, a candidate to become uh, the permanent deputy uh, town clerk, or at least an assistant town clerk, if they're from out of town, so that they can perform most of these duties and just get them on board. Um, whether Jess uh, is going to be available to help us with that selection process, I don't know. That's something we'll have to discuss with her. So the select board might have to make that decision in her absence. But um, but I think we should probably not only be looking for a temporary solution, but a permanent solution to the deputy or assistant position, regardless, mm -hmm. and, um, and get that going, too. Um, I'm, I'm sure this is a, a redundant question or a moot question. When we have people out there that are standing in line for registrations, are we recommending they go and do it online so that it can get done and not standing outside? So, um, <clears throat> so because of the environment last week, I actually had one of our officers standing out there with me, helping me kind of field some of these people as they came up. And there were many people where we that were there for renewals. And um, renewals can be done online. There's no need to come to the town office um, uh, and stand in a, what turned out for some people to be a three hour wait to just to get in the building. And uh, if, you know, we're trying to encourage people to do as many things online as they can. Uh, some people are just adamant that they want to do it in person. And uh, much like the, the request we just had for an absentee ballot um, uh, just before this meeting started, um, they didn't want to uh, make the request by mail and have it mailed to them. They want to come in, make the request, fill out the form, and walk out with their absentee ballot. Well, that requires the office to be open and the right person to be behind the counter. And with the limited hours we have, that's going to be inconvenient for a lot of people. And I, I you know, short term, we don't have a, a great solution for that. And uh, you know, we're trying to do what we can, and we're trying to get back to people. Um, you know, one of the problems that we had with Jess being out is. Uh, you know, her mailbox was full, so people couldn't even leave a voicemail. So I'm having all of those calls redirected to me. But quite honestly, um, 
uh, with the volume of calls, not to mention the other business that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis in this building, uh, I cannot get back to all those people in a timely manner. I, I try to do my best. Um, <clears throat> if it's uh, you know something real quick that I can even shoot them an email back, if I know who they are and what their email address is, I'll try to answer it that way. Uh, rather than trying to play telephone tag with people. Uh, but we're trying to do our best to answer everybody's questions. Uh, we know it's frustrating. Uh, we're trying to, uh, you know, honestly, <laughs> you know, me and Debbie here are pretty much per performing 80% of the tasks in this, in this building right now on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, uh, we're doing the best we can is all I can say. Uh, we want to help the public. We want to, to uh, keep everybody, you know, on track. Um, and one of the, you know, some of the issues we're having is people that have mailed in their absentee ballots are uh, asking questions about whether we've actually received the absentee ballot or not. And honestly, we, we just don't have the time or resources to keep getting back to people on general questions. The moderator did indicate to me tonight that there is uh, a, um, place on the Secretary of State site where once we receive your absentee ballot, we log it in, so you're going to be able to see whether it's received. So I'm going to try to get that information up on our website, so there's a URL that you can go to on the internet uh, to get the answer to that question. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we're just encouraging people, if you can do things electronically, um, that would really be best for, for mm -hmm. the time being, because we're going to have a very difficult time handling the volume in person. Scott, uh, last week I suggested reaching out to the, potentially the deputy, I think it was from Peterborough that had resigned. Right, I have not uh, been able to identify a way to get in touch with her yet. But, uh, Meaning a phone number? Uh, right. Phone number. I think address. that should be a top priority is if, and you mentioned briefly that you had contacted the person that John had mentioned. Yes. What was the no response? no response back yet? Left a message. Because I mean, I mean, I have to. With, I don't think the town of Peterborough is required to give Scott that number for for no, the woman. You know, I got the name. It's in the paper. It's easy enough to just by put it in. We'll find it. And thinking if they resigned and they need some work. Oh, yeah. Help I, us out, help them out. Yeah. So. Any other discussion on that? Nope. I just right. appreciate the effort they're putting in. Yeah. I'm curious what happened with the town clerk. Her health. as Scott mentioned, when she can, she's been trying to come in, mainly when public's not here to do what she can get done. A uh, couple of, well, uh, let's go over on the list of old and new business. The Salt Shed RFP. Yeah, that went out to 11 potential vendors. Okay. Awesome. Also, putting it up <coughs> on the municipal, uh, New Hampshire Municipal Association site tomorrow so that even vendors I haven't identified will have the ability to see it and respond to it if they so desire. So that's nice. Uh, police station. Yeah, so police station uh, waiting, as you're aware, waiting for the new owner of the building across the street to come back with a lease proposal to renew the lease on that. Uh, so is there, an, there is a new owner? There is a new owner, yeah. So they were, so the new owner and representatives for the current owner were here for a meeting, oh, I want to say a week and a half, two weeks ago. And we had a discussion uh, about um, that space. They are certainly, um, happy to keep us there for, 
for a period of time as a tenant. Uh, so we talked about um, uh, some of our requirements. Uh, you know, the chief was was in that meeting as well. We're probably going to try to take some additional square footage because we're out of space up there. It's tight, so there is some some space that. Uh, uh, may be factored into the next lease. That's uh, something that they're going to work out and figure out what, you know, <clears throat> what the cost of adding that space would be. And um, you know, we talked about different different terms in the lease. I think they're going to be proposing back a, a three-year um, lease with optional for additional years should we need it. Um, hopefully, we won't if we. Are successful in getting more articles passed to construct our own police station, but there is some flexibility there beyond the three years um, potentially. And we'll just have to see whether the terms and conditions are going to be similar or the same as the lease we have with the current. Uh, yeah. But we can almost, um, yeah, we can almost, but we can almost guarantee that even even if we don't take extra space, the lease is going up because the prior owner never exercised his automatic rights each Correct. year. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was a... Uh, no, the, the rates did go up. <clears throat> he, had, he had the option to go up every year. Yeah, the rate fine. had gone up. Every so, year? I don't know about every year, but the rate did go up. The last uh, time when we signed that lease in 2006, 17 or 18 that had taken a jump and more than 5% from memory I think we went from 1600 to 1800 uh, so on that police station Sean, I had a question for you. You mm -hmm. had said that you were going to pull together a uh, police station advocacy group. Did that ever happen? I have, uh, I think there's about 12 people that were interested, and I just haven't organized the meeting yet with everybody. Uh, I'm thinking that should be something we should. Okay. Uh, it's kind Get of once I heard that the. <laughs> The lease, <clears throat> like that, the new owners were, you know, willing to, you know, you know, have a th at least a three-year lease with us. I kind of wanted to see where that sat, like timeline-wise, like as far as planning, like the build-out in <coughs> different stages, and seeing which would be the best way to pitch it. I thought what we had discussed was the board's putting forth a warrant article. For a bond article, uh, for a bond for the March election, in that, in order to help answer questions or alleviate concerns, this advocacy group would be up to speed on what it is that we're proposing and would be able to advocate or answer questions that residents may have. Like I'd say, well, partially, but seeing what the getting what um, would be supported, like if it was whether it be a multi-year, you know, that like break up the project between yeah, but years the thing is, or yeah, but the thing is, we could if we could get a bond this year mm -hmm. for what we need minus the um, money we take out of. Um, Surplus, I know that's not the fun, but we could get it at probably the lowest we're going to get it in a long time. All of a sudden, next year, it could double. So if we don't have the money now, yeah. next year we could go, okay, well, now we want to take out another loan, but it's going to cost, that loan's going to cost you twice as much as the one we already have. Why would so, we be, we never discussed doing this in phases. It was bond was going to be the warrant article 
by the police station mm -hmm. and because it's a bond requirement needed the two thirds two thirds or that 60 some odd percent vote so do you want to get that group together like and have a meeting with you guys and you know because you guys have been yeah, working on just this. so that yeah, they can yeah. understand and they can ask oh. us questions if yeah. they're not up to speed and we can give them whatever information yeah because i said what it is is i said we when we had the meeting at the school <clears throat> we probably had 50 odd a little more 50 yeah. odd people that were there that were in favor of it we mm -hmm. had great support um and then when we had all the um construction people from construction here great support you know they they didn't they were actually surprised that we weren't spending that we that this is all we were asking for they're yeah. like well you know some of them had built police stations are like well don't you want this and we're like yeah but we're not going to ask the town to foot that bill yes that's that's the dream but we're building reality yeah um but they were in favor of it but somewhere along the line between the 50 people that are at the school and the 10 people we have here we need people average joe public to talk about it and support it because the chief did the virtual tours he opened the police station did tours we talked about it multiple times we did mailings we had multiple meetings and then we get shot down and yeah we're we've got an opportunity to extend our lease mm -hmm. but again it's a lease on a building which isn't ours we can't do any improvements on and that isn't safe for the public or the police department. No, yeah, I understand. So, that. And so I, it's so, so we're just trying to figure out. What I was looking out. at it was like, why is it getting shot down? If you feel like you have all this support from key people, then how come it's being shot down? Because you know, and that's be, that's where because like, in our reality, trying to root out, we, you know? we have support from key people, but we don't have the support from a vocal majority mm -hmm. that vocal majority goes out and does what we need this advocacy group to do they go out and they get in people's faces and they go vote this way vote this yeah and they give half truths and misinformation or they come to us at the thir 12th hour and go hey i got a better idea and it's cheaper and you go that's not even close to what we need yeah and then those so it's people the, it's those people that don't understand what what we've been trying know, to what do. you've been trying to do is yeah. and i guess the best way would be if like i can't just sway them you guys would be better you know like to explain to them why so i can get a group of people together and i'd be more than happy to have them here at the meeting so we can talk okay. and explain we'll do what, it for next week you can give them all the facts and figures that we have to answer the questions uh, and I would even say at that point in time, if we could ask Tim to come to the meeting, he can give his input. Yeah. Uh, I was at a uh, meeting a couple of weeks ago in a town that was trying to advocate for a police station, and I spoke with the person that was heading that up. And I asked him, I said, out of curiosity, how do you get your message across, you know? And he indicated a lot of time spent on social media where he would just put the facts there and if somebody responded and had a question, he'd give them the facts. I'm thinking, well, that would be uh, an interesting way of getting things across, but if that were what we would need to do using the uh, platform that we currently have in place it may help mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. That way that people can't say, well, I uh, couldn't ask the question or whatever. It may, well, they may have the questions, find it easier to ask online than coming to a meeting or at a public meeting. But Maybe I was someone just curious from that group might be willing to, you know, head that up. Yeah. You know, yeah. Take maybe. Yeah. yeah. Especially somebody that's savvy with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Scott. Uh, my 
last week, a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about uh, training for uh, Roger and Colleen with Joanne. Has that been formalized? Um, so I had a discussion with, with Joanne uh, this afternoon about some of the things that um, that we can start to change to move us in, in the right direction. So we're going to uh, perhaps look at some of some of our procedures in the way we receive and receipt money in. Um, <clears throat> in that, it's back to making sure that the revenue entries are actually made uh, in a more timely manner than they are now. So when we run revenue reports, we know where, where we stand. So she gave me, she sent me over some documents um, uh, to take a look at that we probably need to modify for our purposes. And it's also, um, <clears throat> you know, some of the department heads, et cetera, are gonna have to participate in this change in, in procedure perhaps. So we need to get everybody on board uh, to help uh, put the information in a format that's easier for Carly and Roger to, to process and account for. Um, <clears throat> some towns have all the receipts go through the town clerk's office first. That's typically how it's done, but in our situation, that's not something that we should probably take on right now. But um, What kind of receipts would go through the Everything. Clerk? All revenues would go to the town clerk. You do a financial turnover to the town clerk. It, they turn it into, uh, they make sure that the amount of money being collected matches the turnover sheet from the department head or whoever it may be, parks and rec director, police chief, fire chief, whoever, building inspector's office, uh, wherever revenue comes in. <clears throat> and the town clerk would uh, certify that they collected the amount of money that's on the sheet that then gets turned over to the treasurer who would then actually make uh, the deposits at the bank, take that documentation, give it to Roger, probably the next day after they have a deposit slip in hand, and then that would be entered into the appropriate line items uh, as revenue received for each department. And that is the way most towns uh, do it. Um, it can go right to the treasurer. Um, you know, right now we have the town clerk doing some of the bank deposits, uh, as well as the treasurer doing some of the bank deposits, and I don't think there's an immediate need to necessarily make a change, especially with everything, the, the, uh, the challenges that we have in the town clerk's office. We probably just want to leave that be for now. But we certainly, on the treasurer's and accounting side, uh, and the department heads and the way they turn over money, uh, we can start by in improving that process with a better level of documentation where it's not the treasurer or the accountant that's identifying which account numbers something needs to be posted to. That's really the department head's responsibility. And you lay that out on a sheet. So the, the department would have a specific sheet that has the account numbers, which category each amount of money is received in for. <coughs> and that's how, it's, that's how it's typically done. We don't, we don't do that here. So we, but my first question, Scott, because you're yeah. going on and I don't want, I want to stop and catch up here uh the way it's working now and i agree with you is the town clerk tax collector should be doing the receivables for uh income through that office for income coming through uh to the treasurer and when you're talking about the department heads why would we have department heads doing any billing at all why would, for example, if police have a detail with Eversource, wouldn't we be able to account and control if this office handled the billing and handled the receipt and handled the payable? 
so typically, typically <coughs> what happens in municipal government is the police would would be collecting the money for their police details. They would then turn that money over via the town clerk's office in a, and it eventually would make its way to the treasurer's office to be deposited. The fire department, burn permits, mm -hmm. uh, life safety inspections, burner inspections, whatever it may be, same thing. They would, they would be tracking their own revenues and they would use a turnover sheet um, you know, something like the fire department probably has a low volume. They might not turn their need to turn their mo money over daily, but certainly weekly they should probably be turning that money over. And again, we for now we could have it go right to the treasurer, but there needs to be a process to do that. Uh, we're doing it in land use now, so the monies that building, land use, etc., all that gets turned over to Carlene right now. And with the new software we have, it makes it a little easier with the iWork software for the, on the building inspector side. Um, the, um, um, you know, the other land use, uh, uh, you know, as applicants submit, um, uh, you know, site plan reviews, that sort of thing, that money does get turned over to the treasurer. How often, I'm not sure. I mean, I've had a couple instances where I've walked in there and I've seen you know, checks laying on the table for a couple of days, and uh, I think we've we've addressed that issue. But um, you know, I think we we need to tighten up on a few things. And basically, what Joanne was recommending is this is probably the turnover sheets and, and, and a, a better document trail, and that'll probably satisfy the auditors with some of their concerns as well. Uh, is probably the place for us to start um, with a. You know, with a longer term plan of, you know, honestly, Carlene is is doing a lot more than a treasurer should be doing, um, and um, uh, you know, more of that uh, should be shifted over uh, onto the accounting or finance side of the business and away from the treasurer's office uh, because she's performing more duties than she really needs to do as a treasurer. It's really not not appropriate, and and there's a lot of reasons. From what I understand, the history in this town, why it evolved the way it did, and um, but I'm trying to look at it from rather than you know it's always been done this way is what what's the right way to do it and you know what I've uh, experienced in other towns, um, what I'm hearing from other towns as I talk to their um, uh, their folks is uh, you know we need to to change the model that, that we're using here. And in the process, we will likely have um, uh, a better level of accounting and audit trails, uh, et cetera, uh, than we do today. And have the right people doing the right tasks, which I'm not convinced that we're, we're necessarily doing today. So Joanne and I talked about some, some things we can do and small steps to get us going in the right direction. And um, um, this was her suggestion as, as the first place to start. And once we get our hands around the revenue side of things, she says that, you know, what we do on the expenditure side of things, we have good checks and balances. I look at them, you look at them before you sign. Um, so she's not so concerned here about our accountability as far as the revenues going on. Um, as far as the receipts coming in and making sure revenue is getting uh, <coughs> placed in the right account, the right line item, uh, she has some concerns about it. And she says she's had those concerns for, for a while. So she's been, um, been uh, uh, working with New Ipswich. So there's a lot of things that we, we need to address. She doesn't think that we can just do a, you know, just a large scale overhaul all at once. We need to start kind of picking our priorities and, and start changing processes and pieces slowly and migrating things uh, in, in the right direction and eventually we'll hopefully get to where we, where other communities are in the way, you know, right now where <clears throat> honestly um, we should uh, you know, likely have a, a stronger financial person in place and 
what we were allocating for the treasurer and deputy treasurer could probably be scaled back. And Linda Lynn Jail, when she was here, she was already uh, looking at ways where uh, the number of hours that were going to be required in her office were going to be greatly reduced. And unfortunately, Linda wasn't able to stay with us. But, um, you know, her and Joanne and I already had an idea of where we wanted to take this. And Obviously, this year, for a lot of reasons, is, has been uh, um, a challenging year. But it's time to start looking at how our whole financial structure is handled here and start to look like a, what a typical municipality our size should look like. And it's, it's just a matter <coughs> of uh, um, uh, changing where the work is done and by who, who it should be. So, All right, when we spoke, though, about trying to bring her in mm -hmm. to help us out, my understanding it was because of the means and methods that are being used in-house now versus how it should be done using the software programs that we have. Right. And it was a matter of getting all of the individuals focused on that. Mm -hmm. Is that still, that should be the top priority as far as I was Well, concerned. that is, I mean, this is part of that plan. Yeah, this, you, this is. And you can implement these changes while you're training. That is, that is part of the plan. The, yeah. you know, her, Joanne's observation is that we started down that path with Linda, and when, when Linda, um, um, you know, ended up resigning, that, uh, you know, Roger and Carlene kind of reverted back to where their comfort zone was. Mm -hmm. And so we, we kind of took a step forward, but we probably took a little step back when uh, on Linda's departure. And it's time, I think, to get refocused on what Linda started setting out to do. And Joanne and I discussed some of those things. But, um, but we're going to try to do it in small steps because otherwise... But the small step that you mentioned... Yep is bring it in from a department head how they're going to be reporting and allocating that back to this office. Correct. Okay. What we discussed last time, the problem was, was in this office. Well, how it, that information... Right. So, so the, way, the way the department heads actually bring their revenues into the town Mm -hmm. is actually going to help us on the accounting side because you're going to have a detailed place where all those revenues are supposed to go. So it's going to, while it's going to be a little more work for the department heads on the accounting side, it should streamline the process so the revenues are recognized in the right line items sooner. Because right now... Yeah, it makes sense uh, to me. I mean, it's... Uh, it's uh, you know, right now... What he's saying. revenue report and, and I have... I'm just picturing and I'm... Right. Mm -hmm. That information can come in, and it sits right where it does today. But but what I'm, if we don't take the second step, which right. is which is what I get that Scott's saying is, we're going to ask the department heads to make sure they're bringing a sheet in saying, okay, for example, fire department, here is a thousand dollars. Of that thousand dollars, five hundreds in A, five hundreds or two hundreds in B, and three hundreds in C. And so there's a sheet, and a, yes, everything matches. Then the sheet with the bank receipt will then go and go to the, the desk where it's going now. Mm -hmm. But instead of waiting till the end of the year to plug all the revenues in, which is what's, what's happening happen? now. What's going to happen? But, but the thing is, is again, I think that's where... That's all if I'm that, asking. Oh, no. I want and, that and, big and, picture. Right. And, when, and if that's not happening, I think too, we need... Because yeah. I know that we had done that, like... That same exact, like the sheets of like, like, turning in things and assigning account numbers to it, and then it, like it did, it just sat or. But I look I at it know. this way: if if we have made sure that the department heads are saying no, this is where I want it to go, and everything's there, which, and I'm, I know the rec department did it. I don't know if every department does it. Mm -hmm. Said this is what it, you know. But they turn that sheet in. Then if it's sitting there and it's not being logged in, then there's only one person to blame. There's only one person to hold accountable for that. But the whole reason we had the discussion is because it's not being done. 
and my understanding is the means and methods were different than putting it into the software promptly. It was being tracked somehow manually. So as long as that big picture is there, I'm great. Yeah, I'm fine. And, and basically, this this does put some of the responsibility back on the department heads. But again, they're the ones that are dictating which account numbers these things should be posted to, rather than leaving it up to Carlene and Roger to figure out. I mean, they try to do their best, but what happens, and it happened last year when I first got here, is toward the end of the year, we were doing a lot of general ledger corrections. You know, oh, this is in this account number, it really needs to be in this account number. So we're moving $27 from here to here. We're moving $1,000 from here to here, because it was posted incorrectly yeah. to begin with. And it's happening um, on both both sides of the ledger. Right. And and all yeah. we're all we're doing is making sure that the tools are in place so there's less chance that an error will be made and um, uh, and it makes it a lot more intuitive, hopefully for, for Roger in particular. Um, because honestly <clears throat> Carlene should be backing out of um, some of this. This should be more of Roger's responsibility on the day to day because a true treasurer you know, doesn't in a town does not typically get involved as deep as you yeah. know, what Carlene and Nancy and right. There's no and need to. Do. That's no. what Roger should be doing. Right. That's yeah. why we have an accountant. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. Status of the fire truck. Um, is that posted? Uh, it is not. I have not had time to get to that. So trying to find a, a, another website other than Municipid to put it on. Um, I just don't have the time to. I've looked at a few and they don't seem appropriate. So I'm trying can to, we can we direct it from another social so, media platform? Well, the problem is, um, well, we might be able to do that. We can put in an ad to direct somebody to the Municipid site. That we can can probably do. You can do that on a Craigslist or something. Yeah, like that's that. what I. But a lot of these <laughs> other sites, you know, they're fee based. So if you're if you steer the auction away from their auction or their site, then they're not going to get the revenue and they're not going to let you do that. The only one I was so, thinking, and I mentioned it before, was getting it out onto the uh, Facebook Marketplace and the Craigslist. Yeah, and, and, and if it can direct them to whatever that Municipid website yeah. is, that's terrific. Did that gentleman from Revision ever send you more information? He did not. No. Did we receive that cell tower agreement back? Uh, Were they, they satisfied with it? Um, they haven't had a chance to, to look at it. I've got some additional changes that I got from Primex that Primex wants me to make to it. What were those? Um, Do you remember? I, I, not off the top. Did uh, Mark ever get additional solicitation for fuel oil pricing? We already talked about yep. that last week. We already we did it. It was two weeks ago, or what, when you weren't here. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, we did get the additional number, and we were, Hafners were still lower by ten cents. You know, do you remember what that was? One sixty nine. Did we ever send, I thought I had seen, we had sent a letter to the police officer that had resigned regarding the payment due for the early resignation? Yes. 
did we how was that going to be so the, funded? <laughs> the um, well my understanding is that the check was actually going to come from the town of Pinsdale okay and that's due Go and Sean wasn't here. We had discussed uh, approving the employee manual. We said we'd wait till Sean was here. Mm -hmm. Do you have any issues with the employee manual? No. Motion to accept the employee manual as presented. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We knew you were taking all that time to read it. We didn't want to. Well, you, there's no changes after, like the last copy that you sent before no. the meeting, right? No. Yeah. no. Okay. So, like I said, as long as yeah. you were that that one that you read through the whole thing, as long as you were good with that one, we're all set. Uh, any other new or old business? Uh, yeah. So when I was going through the bills. I noticed the paving final cost came in at 586,000 and change. Um, I felt like we had discussed it being much lower, like somewhere around, I thought it was like 540 or. I think like 560. I think it was 562 in the PO that we originally issued. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if you, anybody knew why or how, like the additional. Well, the one thing was that if we still were under our warrant article was to finish the end of uh, Hubbard Farm, yeah. which got paid. So that was we supposed stopping to go at all the way. Pine? No, yeah. we were only going up to Pine Street. Yes, yeah, so I just didn't know who made that call because I don't remember it being. Do you want me to tell you when we discussed sure. it? Well, we, dis we discussed it. I just. I was under the impression as well that, and I think you even brought it up the other week, David, is that um, Peter had never kept us in the loop of what we had left after Ashby and Binney, mm -hmm. so we knew how far we could go down Hubbard. He just did it, and then we were worried that he had overspent. Obviously, he didn't overspend because he, he was under the 600, but I think I agree with Sean on the part that I thought I thought we were supposed to be at least informed as to where we were going to be sitting so that we could make that decision on what to do and which way to go with it. Because, I mean, put it this way, at 586, I, I mean, not that it's a lot of money, but that leaves us 14000 that he could have made the turn and gone further down Pine as well. But we can encumber those funds for next year's... I understand that, but he could have put the two-inch yeah. base... A little bit further down Pine, mm -hmm. and then but we top it this year. Okay, just give me a second to find out how to do the search, and I'll tell you what <laughs> I have in my notes. Yeah. Uh, but we had never discussed going down Pine as a board. We had talked about taking the turn down Pine, and you even you went, you did yeah, ask just yeah. to be, when we were going to be paving Hubbard Pond, mm -hmm. and we were going to Pine as we've done on all the roads. You make it so that you can turn off and still be on pavement. Right. Well, and, th and this is my only, and this is my only reason for even bringing it up is that. Well, first of all, I did find the green sign. It's on the other side of the road, so you can only see it once the leaves are gone. Right. Remember, I said the pine was had like a little white sign oh, with black yeah. lettering. Yeah. The the actual one is on the opposite side of the road. So when. So it's on the right-hand side of the road, way up in the air. Mm -hmm. So you can only see it when the leaves finally fall off the trees. Um, so my only um, thought on why I would have considered going further down Pine if we had the money is that you can't, you have to bring a different truck up there to now take care of that little section of dirt road for the two driveways that are on that road. Mm -hmm. Because we salt, we salt the pavement, we sand the dirt. So now we've got to go down pine with 
dirt. So you got to send a separate truck up there, correct? Because you don't the salt and sand trucks aren't the are they? I'm just out of ignorance. I'm at, they're not the same truck, are they? Yeah, because they don't just use salt. I'm just use sand on the roads. They do it on the dirt roads. Right. But they're not going to send another truck up there to do, you know, 200 yards of road. I'm, and I'm thinking from my perspective, mm -hmm. not from theirs. So. so. But going back on 6220, you made a motion to award the paving to all state paving and qualify that Hubbard Pond road be paved last so we can determine how far we can pave. No. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know who like knew, like where we were at and how far we could go. Like at that point, Peter like Peter, Peter yeah. knew. so yeah. he just because he gets the slips. Yeah. yeah, like I said, but you would even. I mean, I'm just saying you would yeah. even brought it up the other week that man. I hope he didn't overspend because none of us had the final bill. Exactly. He's yeah. telling me he's got it. We're under. Okay? okay. But when I see the invoice come in, yeah. that's what I'd be looking at. Yeah. But like I said, I just. It's yeah. just one of those things like there's once you turn on the pine yeah. as a town, we only have two driveways on pine and then it's dirt road and we didn't even go to the two driveways we could have gone to. So mm -hmm. it's just one of those things. If we could have had the opportunity to just make it that yeah, much easier. Discussion and, yeah. Yeah, just, a, just a thought. So Because yeah. after that, there's water and then you're in wrench. I mean, it's it's not. It's a little bit. There's there's really very little other ability. But I think ability. Pine Street would have had to been built. In other words, put down good material. Hubbard Pond, I wasn't so concerned because they had done that a while ago. Okay. But Pine, and it wouldn't have been a huge dollar factor. But we mm -hmm. would have had to have done something with bringing in material. Mm -hmm. But when I had taken a ride up there, what I thought was that where they paved to. A little excessive. Yeah, was yeah. past the town line. Yeah, but and but and can see that, and the whole reason I thought he was going to go further down Pine, the other reason I thought is because he just re, he just spent <clears throat> time and money rebuilding the culvert that goes from Hubbard Pond up to the driveway for the condos mm -hmm. and we didn't pave that piece so I thought it, I that's why I thought he was doing it, is that in, in his mind he was gonna go past it and that way we don't have issue with that but if you want to do it we can do it next year they said they'll go out there and top yeah. it so you can yeah. I'm just thinking it, it might be, make sense just to because otherwise what happens is we end up with water runoff because of that hill and that what hill the one coming down coming down from the coming down from the condos it washes out that part of the road right there so that's the gravel road yes the gravel right. road yeah so so then what are you going to do not go down that road if it washes out <laughs> <laughs> no, no but if this water is what's running down from the condos mm -hmm. as that gentleman we had on uh Gibbs Ave mm -hmm. are responsible for controlling the water not to come out onto the public way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would well, be the first thing to get addressed if but it's it, that yeah. bad of a... But like I said, I don't know if it was because of their driveway or it's because of our collapsed culvert, which has now been replaced. We'll find out. By that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, find, I'll find out in the morning because I'll go that way tomorrow morning. All right. Any other items on either one of your lists? Um, and then in going through some of this stuff and some of the conversations that we had in the past, it seems like there's more than a few Zoom accounts. Like for, it's almost as if each department has their own Zoom account. And I didn't know which one we use. Like which one you I was using to. the one from the planning board. The, All right. Yeah. All right. That's the one. The only one, additional one I know of is the one that Bob Boynton decided to get for conservation because there's a slip in here like in this pile for the fire department to for 14.99 a month for zoom so i didn't know if it was something that we were trying to condense we were well yeah. no reason. if that but i also guess that's 
that's her budget. She's going to have to figure out where that's coming out of. Where conservation came to us with, they don't have a line for that at all. Mm -hmm. She wants to burn fourteen ninety nine out of her communications budget. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. I agree with you. We shouldn't be if. Because I think it could be multi-user, yeah. and even if you're running meetings at the same time, the whole, like it's whole. just a different number. Right. So it's not because I know that uh, John Schlamwaffel had mentioned something about conflicting meeting times potentially in one of his last emails, but I don't think that that's a thing, is it? Like with with the paid accounts, like you could have, so. multiple, you could have multiple meetings. Like multiple meetings. Yeah. 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 So yeah, the only issue they have is the problem that they're having is right now that account is set up that as soon as you log on, it starts recording, which isn't, necess isn't necessary. Because mm -hmm. I noticed for the past two ones that I logged in, as soon as you start up in the corner, it says it's recording. So that means it's holding information somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if that's something that we want to look at. Yeah, it's a little bit of money, but it's still... If the other departments don't have to spend it. Mm -hmm. Can you let her know at your staff meeting? Assuming she shows. All by email? Hmm. And then, um, I wasn't sure if uh, the prime roofing guys had been in yet or if you had heard from them. Last I talked to Tyler, mm. is he was going to have a discussion with his attorney. If his attorney said it was appropriate for him to meet with us, he would. Otherwise, you know, we're going to uh, come to a soft and speak. Mm. And then, just from last week, David, uh, you had brought up improving the highway department building. And I know if there was improving, not improve, well, maintaining, <laughs> imp which would be improvements. <laughs> um, but then there was no real idea or plan on how it was to be done. So I didn't know, or someone tasked to do it. So I was just looking for clarification on that. So, because I know that the building's in some what of disrepair. Selectmen should go down there to look at it. I don't remember that, but I, I don't either. But I don't, I don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't have a problem doing it. Yeah, I don't mind going down. Agree? Yeah, we can go down. When? Next week before the meeting. What time? Five. Five o'clock. Deal. Calendar, so I don't forget. Right. Scott, could you have Peter there for that time? Oh, and then uh, who's responsible for the town report? You are. <laughs> they didn't tell you? No. Yeah, new yeah. guy always has to do it. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right. So Lori typically is the one who consolidated everybody's input. Lori was. How are we looking on that front? Have you been able to narrow down the candidates? <clears throat> so we're down to um, two candidates right now for that position. Um, we had four that we had narrowed it down to. Two of them withdrew because of um, lack of compensation and benefits. 
so um, they took a pass on the job. Mm -hmm. um, the other two, uh, we're having uh, one in on Friday for a face-to-face -face interview, and one uh, we're meeting here Monday night um, for a face-to-face. -face. And then out of those two, uh, we hope to be able to narrow it down to one, which hopefully the following Tuesday we can bring in front of the board. Okay. So and when you say we, is that you and I, Deb? Debbie. Yeah. 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 I'm having Debbie do it because this is the person that she's going to have to work with. And I want her to at least have some input. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hire somebody and say, oh, by the way, yeah, this is who you're working with now. I think that... Uh, so they'll come in when? So they're coming Friday. in this you Friday? Said Friday and Monday. Monday. Monday night, yep. And then is it this Tuesday or that Tuesday? It will probably be that Tuesday. 27? 27. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't see how we can make that happen any faster. I wish we could. Well, get the person on Friday, you're interviewed, and then on Monday, well, I can give them a heads up to see if they can yeah. do it that Tuesday. Yeah. If it picks up a week that you can yeah. get help in the office, yeah. I think that'd be advantageous. Yeah, that's an understatement. That, but then there's a few more on the list that we haven't touched on. Yeah. Uh, the HVAC system upgrades. Yeah, there's uh, there's a few things going on there. Um, so, um, you know, we've had vendors in looking at this building, and um, um, I think the consensus is that on the heating side, this building is probably okay. The systems that we have downstairs, the two furnaces, they're a little over 20 years old, but they're pretty generic systems. So they're, you know, oil forced hot air uh, type systems. And they're pretty simple. You know, the, the burners and the blowers that are in them are, you know, kind of generic stuff, easily available, inexpensive to repair. Mm. So um, while some vendors were, were, you know, potentially looking at replacing those. Uh, the bottom line was what's available today isn't that much more efficient than what we already have, so we're not going to be buying anything as far as efficiency. Where we have the biggest problem in this building is with the air conditioning side. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we looked at the ductwork as the ductwork in this building because of the way this building was constructed, I think, in phases over time. Uh, some of the ductwork is probably undersized for what it needs to be, but the problem in this building is a lot of this is crawl space, mm -hmm. hard to get to, hard to upgrade. Um, so uh, what we're looking at now is doing mini splits. Uh, probably for my office and for Jessica's office. The rest of the building is probably served okay with the, the rest of the the rest of what is here. Um, the challenge that we have is, you know, Jessica doesn't doesn't have any AC. That's why she uses a window AC because she just doesn't get enough, and I don't get enough AC in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, so the thought that was that the mini splits would probably be the least expensive solution uh, to satisfy both those needs. So we have got a quote from one vendor on it, we've got another vendor that's going to be submitting a quote on that, uh, hopefully shortly. Yeah, but that's less of a priority, obviously the time of year, we're not really worried about AEC right now. I've got other more immediate problems with heat that we'll discuss in a second. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, that's kind of where the vendors are, are leaning. All right, I don't agree with that at all. I'm holding my tongue, but now okay. I don't agree with that. I think what we should do, uh, there's a local engineer, design day mechanical, Doug Waite, I don't know if you guys know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we should contact them, 
have them come out, assess it, give us a plan because as my, I advocate that we need a system in here. I don't want to, this sounds like band-aids if you're doing just certain areas. Uh, access to the basement area and crossing where the two additions are is difficult, but we have an attic. Nowadays, the ductwork can be run up in the attic and feed all the places with a drop down to the lower level. But I'd rather leave that up to somebody that does that. Once they give us a design criteria, I would think that this building would be better suited for uh, a VRV system, which is similar, very similar, because I think where we save in the long run, because if Scott's correct, at least in my opinion, I think it's correct, is that by changing burners and boilers, you're gonna save somewhat, but it's not gonna be huge. Whereas with the, uh, it's an all electric system, but you're, it, they're much more efficient, energy efficient. And I'd rather see somebody come in that can give us the right direction. I'm fine with that. What was the name of that company? Uh, design day mechanical. I can follow yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. And he's. I'm sure he's familiar with the building already. How much, uh, I mean, should I get quotes on that consulting or just hire them outright? I would say he's local, economical. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't say, don't worry about it. Okay. If you can ask him what the price is going to be. Say there's heating issues. So, um, so we've got two two issues. We also got quotes on replacing the boiler at the fire station, which is over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. So I've got quotes on that. I'd like to get a vote on that so we can move forward with that. We did fire up the existing one, um, and of course, because it's cold weather, and of course, it immediately sprung a leak. So we had to do a kind of a quick $200 repair on that. That one is where we're going to. Um, see uh, the most gains in efficiency by going with newer technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we may save up to 40% in, in the amount of uh, fuel oil that we're going to use. Um, so uh, in that building, interestingly enough, when we did the analysis, and I don't have it in front of me, but we e use more heating oil in that building than we do for building three. So, um, it, um, uh, uh, you know, it's been an issue. Uh, Meredith has been, been, you know, flagging this system for a while. So, um, you know, I do have, have three quotes uh, from vendors, um, and, and it's actually came in less expensive than I thought it was going to replace that system. Um, this would not. Uh, replace the modine units that are already existing that are hanging from the ceiling of the fire station. It would reuse those, but the boiler itself would be replaced with a more efficient system. Uh, no need to, to change the modine units is what people are telling us. Right? Mm -hmm. so, um, <clears throat> so that's number one. The other one is the, uh, the unit down at the DPW garage on the green center end has failed. Um, it apparently is beyond repair, so it needs to be replaced because our water comes in the end of the building for the building, so we can't have the pipes freeze. So um, I have, uh, uh, we've already had uh, two vendors look at it. We don't have their quotes back yet, and I have a, a third vendor looking at it Thursday afternoon 
to get quotes in that unit. Now that's a fairly big unit there. Um, it's, I think that one is 330,000 BTUs. And the theory is the reason it was so big was because when that was used as metal fabrication down there, that they were counting on that overhead door being opened and closed often, but we don't use that door at, at that frequency anymore, so we could probably get away with a smaller unit. The other unit on the other end of that space in the green center is, is still working. It's a smaller unit. Um, so um, we do have some heat functioning down there, but where, where, the, where the well comes into that building that supplies that whole building with water, yeah. where the expansion tank is and all that, is gonna, is gonna freeze if we don't replace this unit. So- Is that a packaged rooftop unit? It's, it's a horizontal unit. It's, it's not on the rooftop, it's inside the building, inside the space, but it's up high. It is a large, a large horizontal unit size of but is it a air handler is it fed from a boiler is it electric is it it's oil it, it, it is oil and it and it blows air out one end of it um, and uh, mark was kind of describing to me some of the issues they've they, it, it blows it toward the garage door instead of <laughs> back into the the main space so maybe that needs a bit of a redesign. And again, when the door was being opened and closed, that probably made sense to have the heat going that way. <coughs> they Where tried is the to well coming in? Right below it. So the In well, that open? In that open bay where we normally store extra police cruiser. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the police cruiser, not where the uh, grater and whatnot comes in. No. Okay. No. Yeah. So, so about, you know, Half of the space of the green center gets heated by this this unit as well because that's all open space that whole big area back there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's where the well comes in, so um, it, it's not something um, uh, that we can take a pass on. Uh, so I figure I'm going to get quotes on that. Hopefully, I'll have uh, something maybe by next Tuesday's if the vendors turn them around pretty quick. I put a sense of urgency on it because obviously the temperature this time of year is going down, not up. That'd be good if we're going to be taking a, you know, a tour down there anyways yeah. to have that so, package. Um, Are we going to put just a heater in that room for now? Um, it's such a huge space. I Where mean, the cruiser was? Yeah. High ceiling. Uh, yeah, but you're just going to keep it tempered. If we got a concern with dropping temperatures. Yeah, temporarily until. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, but not for the winter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, Mark thought, you know, throw a propane heater in there or something like that, or you know, something just to keep the the space warm. But can't use propane indoors. Yeah. So what what are the quotes at the fire station? So the quotes that I have at the fire station are. I'm going to want to review those before I even... Play I'm just curious it. what kind yeah. of numbers they're throwing yeah. at us. And, and who the vendors are. That's so this is Wally Seating and Air. They're out of Nashua. So uh, their price is 14473 um, installed. What are they installing, do they say? H.B. Uh, Smith... Uh, 510,000 BTU cast iron boiler and a uh, has anybody giving you a proposal on a condensing boiler uh, I couldn't tell you I mean I'm not a HVAC specialist I have the vendors come in look at it and make me a recommendation condensing boilers are so efficient uh, they're small so, not to run a wall yeah Weatherby Plumbing and Heating came in at sixteen five, so they're over two thousand dollars more. Same thing. And yep, replace boiler with a Pure Pro Trio commercial oil boiler. boiler, boiler. Yep. Um, and then Milford Plumbing and Heating. Let's see, replacement with uh, their. Recommending a Buterus oil fire, fired a boiler, and their price is 
price is uh, $15,600. Yeah, so we, is it just a different type of company that does the ones that you're no, talking like about? Garris is a, no, 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 those are just different brand. The concept, uh, a condensing boiler, they're small units. You mount them on a wall and the efficiency of them. There's no chimney normally. It's a PVC yeah. pipe. That's a, that's what we did over at the lodge. We did it, ours is propane though. Yeah. But yeah. it's a direct, and yeah, we actually have to, we keep a heater. Like in, in there, there's a little wall heater. So that if you turn the heat way down, you can almost you can basically turn the heat off if you're not going to use a building. You just use a little electric heater to keep the water from freezing in the in the unit. But for down there, I yeah, mean, for there, most so of it those be fine. It's boilers go. are not. I'm not even aware that they're oil fired. You put in propane, yeah, and gas fired, and that's it. That we but did propane the and it's direct. Of them is like, yeah. I want to say ninety five percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ours ours is in a closet. Like yeah, yeah. It's a little closet, and um, but yeah, it's, it's and unbelievable the amount of heat those things crank out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it is propane. But yeah, it's just and a piece of PVC pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we. I mean, obviously not not as big as we need over there, but I think we did it for under eight. I wonder why. Do you think they're just like they're just looking to replace no, like the light? Yep. As soon as he said it, running in my mind, I said, "Okay, this is where the number should be." Yeah. I said, my mind was twelve to fifteen thousand. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them came in close to that, and I know Budaris boilers. They're a good boiler. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't catch the name of the second one, but uh, that's what you need to look at. But I'm my role here is to say what's the best thing for the town, and if there's something more efficient and economical. Explorer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. And they may have looked at it to say, you know, you've got an oil tank here, so we priced it using oil. You know, not thinking of introducing propane. Okay. I was just curious, is there any sort of um, policy on using local contractors for this sort of a thing? Typically anything over five thousand dollars we have a policy that we get a bid. And it would right, go I'm saying bit. to reach out to the local yeah, contractors yeah, for yeah. the bidding as well. Cause mm -hmm. I, yeah. I mean, they're semi-local, but better than Boston. But. Yeah, yeah, because I, I think, yeah, I mean, we got our quote from um, Manadnock Heating and Cooling. Yeah. When yeah. they were, they were local, and they, now they're in Peterborough. But when we first got the thing, you know, but it wouldn't, it, again, it wouldn't hurt to find out just what the cost would be on one of those. Because, yeah, they're way more efficient. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I can't blame the guys. They walked in, oil tank, big bo boiler. Yeah, I'll give you a quote on replacing that. Yeah. 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 And, again, it might be something if you're contacting Doug Waite. Yeah. Two for one. There you go. Can I get a copy of those? Yeah, I'll leave one too. Okay. Now, when something like that comes up, Scott, is that something that you actually make all the calls or just Mark make the calls and get those lined up? It's a combination of both. I'm just trying to think of something to take off your plate so you're not the one handling it. That he could make the calls and get these things lined up. I mean, you you got enough stuff on your plate right now, keeping the office running. Like to make a motion go to non-public under ninety one A regarding uh, employee compensation. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Um, well, there's one other. Halloween? Uh, yeah. What about? I don't know. I don't know why it was on there. I, I just put it on there, so if you wanted to. It, it's we already on the website. Yeah. Okay. Halloween right. is Halloween. Okay. Yeah. 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 Five to seven. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to yeah. use yeah. this as an opportunity to make a public announcement so people would know what the that one Halloween is on. Um, 
The hours are Saturday the 31st, 5 to 7 p.m. If there are residents because of COVID concerns that don't want children coming to their house, they're, they should just turn off their outside lights just to discourage them from, yeah. from knocking on their door. Yeah, and that's, I was watching some other updates from other towns, and that's basically what they said, the same thing, is if you are worried, please be go the easy route, make it very obvious that you're not participating, turn off your lights, um, yeah. whatever else, but well, other than that, it's an opportunity for the kids to have something. Okay. All in favor, please. I didn't get a second yet. I said it. Yeah, oh. second. Yeah. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, guys. Thank Good you, night, Jason. Jason.